Hi everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome to StanelleMyersEnterprises.com where you'll learn about money, business, and entrepreneurship. How y'all doing out there? It's been a little bit. Um, so I just want to do a little recap and just a reminder, not that y'all really care, I always say this, but I care and I'm excited because I see growth in um, Tony and myself and our finances. And I just want to share with everyone. So we are on baby step three at the very end and I'm going to show you my screen. And baby step three is where you save three to six months of your emergency fund. The whole point of making these videos is to encourage everyone that you all need a plan. And you need to be intentional with your plan and you need to have some goals. So we're on baby step three. We came up with an amount that if anything would happen to either our ones or, you know, um, my company or the job or anything that would would be in a way that we would have a cushion. And um, so we came up with this amount and it. Honestly, it's been six months and in April, we're going to meet our, our final goal. So um, I'm really excited about that. What I'm going to do is show you my screen on the different baby steps on where we were as far as the snowball, because it's, it's a certain amount. So that amount that we're dealing with is the same amount that once we paid off all our debt, that's the same amount that we're taking over to um, that we took over to our emergency fund to fund our emergency fund so fast. And any additional funding went in there. Um, and then that same amount there goes into your baby step four, five, and six. And I'm going to show you that. And actually, baby step one is when you save that $1,000 for your emergency fund. You put it to the side. You cut up your credit cards. You call them. You start being intentional and you start paying off your debt. So so baby step one is so you just do not have any type of um, reliance on a credit card. Baby step two is where you take you do your debt snowball. You take your smallest to your lowest as far as your your um, your bills that you have to pay and you start knocking them out. You knock out the lower one. You go to the, the next, the next, the next. And that's how you start building that snowballs get bigger and bigger because you're finding money. You're modifying your lifestyle, eating out, vacations, everything. You are being so disciplined. Um, as Dave Ramsey say, beans and rice, beans and rice. You're just not doing what you did before because you need to find some money to pay down this debt. And baby step three, where we are now, is that now you're going back to that baby step one, that thousand dollars. I'm gonna show you that, and you're funding that thousand dollars. And that's you know, since you don't have no debt, as only maybe your house if you own a house, you you should be able to fund it rather quick. A lot of people, it may take them depending on what their number. Some people it's 10,000. Some people it's 15, it's 30. It all depends. It depends if you're single. Um, it depends if you're married. It all depends what your number is. So um, I'll get into that as well. But I just want to say that it's really, really important, you guys, to not just go to work every day and pay the bills. So I'm going to take you to my screen because um, we're in our fourth week of Financial Peace University. And this week we talked about baby step four, five, six, and seven. So stay tuned and you will see that. Enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this less painful as possible. And hopefully um, it can be clear so you can understand. So um, this is an example of Tony and myself, our um, debt and emergency fund um, together. So up here was our debt and the numbers are changed. Um, in another video, I think the number is higher. It's like 1500. Sometimes the number did change as we were in that process of baby step two, paying down our debt. So here, baby step two is the snowball. 
And again, just real quick, this was Tony Carr 369, my son's a Paul Carr 300. Our Nordstrom's credit card was $70. Chase was 228, Capital One was 222, another Capital One was 171. We had two Capital Ones retarded. And Frontier was 49. So you see Frontier is the smallest. So we started paying that Frontier down. And the way we really started paying down the debt was that um, just uh, fortunately, because I have another business, when I pay myself from that business, I was just basically using that check to knock out this debt. Now, for those of you that do not have a business, that's fine. Um, you can sell something, find stuff, get another job, whatever you need to do. My other business was my other job um, because I was able to just throw that to this debt. And from my other business, from my paycheck that I received, that went towards our paying our household um, debt. So I always encourage if it's two of you working together, that one person, if you're able to take their check, to pay off their debt, however you can, however you need to do it, because everyone is different and how you do your bills is different. But in our situation, I was able to just focus on paying this debt right here using one of my um, one of my checks from my companies when I got paid. And that was once a month. So. This, I want you to keep in mind this 1409. So this all came to 1409. Like I said before in another video, this is before we paid our mortgage, before we fed the kids, before we um, bought food, we didn't even eat yet, toiletries, whatever it is, anything to run our household. You don't even see that on here. There's nothing on here that indicates how our household was ran, water, gas, nothing. This was just debt. And this is why I'm, crying out to everyone to say this is ridiculous this does not make any sense at all to be in bondage oh i can go on for days so this 1409 right here this was our debt so we paid it off as you all know we paid it off it took a year and each baby step takes time so this took a year and it took us one year because again i was just throwing that check throwing everything at it so this 1409 it was actually 1409 and then sometimes plus the check and so that's a large amount of money sometimes it'd be an extra 1500 sometimes it'd be an extra 1800 um, sometimes it just be the 1409. It really all depend on where we were, what what we were doing at that time. So it, it really depends. But this, I want you to focus on this magic number. So this was our 1409. And after all your all your debt is out the way, then you go to baby step three. And right here where it says the emergency front fund roll over to 1409 plus any additional. So as October 2018, we were debt free and our baby step one was $1,000 right here. Plus, now we're out of debt up here. We added that $1,409. So that made for October $2,409. Then in November, we had the $2,409 plus the $1,409 again, plus any additional, any other check, anything. So that other check came in. But but as I recall, sometimes with that check, I would like it was just different things because we have two um, two daughters, our kids, they're in college. It was just always something. And remember, we just started on Dave Ramsey and his baby step last year. So we're planning as we're going along and I'm trying to figure this out. So December, it was. The, the 2409 to 1409 plus it just kept going on and on January, February, and now we're here in March. And March, we're right here, literally. If I throw everything at it right here, we'll be done this month. And today is what? The 25th, we'll be done if I throw everything at it, but I'm not. And um, the reason why I'm not is because I'm going to show you a, a video and how to prepare. We're, my birthday's in April. Happy birthday to me. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. Okay. So, and we do everything with cash. So we just came up with a plan that we are um, saving and putting our money up, um, living off cash, of course, and funding this 
birthday vacation slash spring break for my daughter. And I'm going to show you a video where I'm actually showing you putting the cash in the envelope for that particular purpose. So our goal, we're going to reach our goal in April. And so with this magical 1409, again, all the debt is paid off. Okay, so all this debt equal to 1409 a month. Then after that, baby step three, we started feeding our emergency fund. We're not going into this emergency fund because we want to go out to dinner. We're not going into this emergency fund because we saw a nice pair of shoes or a bag or some jeans men. No, we're not doing that. We go into this emergency fund if it's an emergency. And actually, I had to go into this emergency fund um, for my car, for my 1997, my boo-boo. And I had to, because we already have a, a car account, I only had to take out, I think, like 300 or 400. So I had to refund it. Then I had to go back because my broke daughter that um, thinks she's grown, she we were helping her get a car. And we had to actually go into this, but she's paying me back because she works for me. So her money come off the top. Soon she get paid. I tap that shit. Okay. Can't do it. All right. So, so this is our um, April goal reach right here. We're going to reach our our amount, and again, your amount is whatever it is to run your actual household. Mine is your debt, so that's your four walls, which is your actually your um your mortgage or your rent. It's your food. It's clothes. Clothes, not buying a pair of shoes. Clothes if, if the weather change and you see, oh my goodness, I need a coat or the kids need something, something that is needed. And it's um your whatever it is to um to actually run your house. Oh, I already said that. And your gas for your car. So it's the the four walls, the four things that you actually need to run your household. And I probably said that wrong, but anyway. So um, so this is it. So keep this 1409 in mind. So now what we taught, um, myself and Tamika, Tamika, um, is a blessing. She, um, helps me with financial peace university and Tamika is really that ram in the bush. I tell you nothing but God heaven sent. So baby step four, five, and six, what Dave Ramsey was actually teaching was baby step four, five, and six, and we leave the class. But I wanted to go overboard and break it down to class so they can understand. Because in baby step four, now that you don't have any debt, you're focusing on retirement. And that retirement is 15% of your income. So I just wanted to show you what that looked like using that total, that 1409. So I wanted to come, I came up with this amount actually showing you what it was our real amount showing you this is how you do baby step four five and six so baby step four is retirement baby step five is saving for college baby step six baby step six is you pay off the home and baby step seven which is not on here is you just give 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 and just give um so here's an example so this is a debt snowball and again we're using a 1409 now when you um have a, uh, some of you have your IRA and you're, um, you're actually feeding your IRA. Dave Ramsey recommend that while you're doing any baby steps that you're not, you're stopping your IRAs, you're stopping your 401ks. So for a year and a half now, I haven't been con contributing to my IRA at all. Um, I was contributing $458 a month and I stopped so I can use that 458 to pay off um, to help pay this debt right here, over here. And that's, again, I was taking money anywhere I saw money. I was <laughs> snatching it up to get out of debt because I chase capital one. Y'all can forget that. I'm not, I'm not funny. Y'all to be rich. I, I'm, I, that's me. I'm the rich one. I'm not funny y'all for that. So anyway, focus. So example one is the debt snowball rollover. So this is an example. We're using that 1409. Now, if you're not maxing it out and what I did was I, I did an example with not maxing the IRA contribution. And this is what I showed in class. So this is common sense for me. And I have to see it in order to be able to communicate it in the Financial Peace University. I just had to do something to actually show the steps. So spouse one invests 
in the IRA. So what I did was I broke down the 1409. So it's just the 15%. If you do the 1409 and you times that by 15, if you do 15% of the 1409, it comes out to be 211. So spouse one is investing only 211 and spouse two is only investing only 211. Now, um, what I what I took out and I didn't add up here is that um, if you are under 50 years old, you can invest up to a went up 6,000. If you're over 50 years old, you can invest up to $7,000. Um, and that's a year. And that comes out to be um, for those that invest in the five thousand the six thousand dollars it comes out to be roughly five hundred a month and those that invest in the seven thousand um if you're fifty and over that comes out to be roughly five eighty five or so a month but for this particular case here they're not investing the max you see that they're not investing the max right here so spouse one is only investing two eleven thirty five Spouse two is only investing to 1135. And with that balance, I just divided it. And the kids college is 493 and the house and, and the house towards the principal. You pay towards the principal is 493. That all adds up to 1409. If you if you just take time and look at this, that all set up, add up to 1409. So you're doing all four. You're doing all actually three of the baby steps at the same time. You're focused on the retirement here. You're putting money towards the kids college here because, again, we're not relying on student loans. We don't want our kids to go to college and come out with debt, but we want to teach them how to work and how to help while they're in college. And if they get, a, you know, get acclimated to school, get a little part time job. But we want to help our kids. And sometimes Kids going to college is a legacy. I was just listening to uh, Chris Hogan's show, and this family agreed that they're going to pay for their kids. It's their legacy if their kids do not have debt. And that's cool because you know what? That's our legacy as well. So here, um, the kids' college is 493 Now, you see, that's a lot that you're plugging in. Now, if you have more than one, it depends on their age, however you want to do it. If you want to give that older child more money and split it up in three, split it up, split it up in twos, it all depends. I'm just trying to give you a visual so you can actually see it and understand it. And then again, here's um, paying towards the house, the principal, because we have a goal. Our house will be paid off. I, do, uh, I will do another video with that. We also have a rental property that's going to actually be paid off the end of this year. God willing. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So example two is the debt snowball. Now this is the rollover. So this is if you're maxing. So look at the difference. Spouse one, um, under age 50, invests um, the the contribution is $500 a month. So if you see that here, spouse two over 50 invests the contribution is 583 a month. So we're doing, these two are doing the actual max. They're maxing their contributions. And that's what Tony and I are going to do. We're going to max it because in our age, I am 43, going on 44, April 25th. Yes, Taurus. Uh, yes. Um, and he is... 50-ish because he don't like me telling how old he is, but he's he's older than me by seven and a half years. He'd be like, I'm only older than you by seven. No, you're older than me by seven and a half years. So actually, um, when I was born, you were seven. And when I was like 14, you was like 22. Like, that's nasty. But anyway, when you think of it, you know. <laughs> okay. So the kids' college savings here is 163, and the house towards the principal is 163. You see how it's lower now because you're maxing out the contributions. So when you max the contributions, it gets a little lower. So you, you and your spouse, or yourself, or your accountability partner have to decide what works. But once you're out of debt, play with these numbers. Now your money's not going to these bills. Your money is going to your future because we, you have to invest in your future. And the last example is um, spouse one invest the max of the 401k. So right here, I wanted to do a 401k or 403b. So let's say the employer contributes um, 315 and the actual person have a 401, 40 k 3 and contributes 315. So that's a total of $630. So what I did was I took the 315, spouse two 
contributes the max in the in the five in the IRA, which is five eighty three. Say you don't have no kids, so that's zero. No kids right here. And then, um, by the way, if you don't have no kids, God bless y'all. God bless you. Okay. House, the principal is 511. So you see that, and this is all from the 1409. So I split this 1409 in three different areas so you can be able to see how you can save for your retirement, your college, and your home. Your number, when you pay off your debt, you just going to add all your debt every month. When you're completely debt free, whatever that number is, when you're debt free, that's your number. That's how we're doing it. Everybody does it different. Student loans, everybody does it different. But whatever your number could be, 1300 your number could be you paying 2500 in debt your number could be 900 whatever your number is this is what you keep using to get to the next step and build and get to the next step and build and get to the next step and build so you might want to watch this video over again so you can really um pause it stop break it down and just actually see what you can be doing as far as your retirement and um if you have any questions Feel free. What they say, leave a description. Nobody left and asked me anything yet. So I really don't know how to do this yet. But if you have any questions, subscribe, ring the bell. When I watch other videos, hit that bell so you know that when I have a video, it'll pop up. Um, and just re look over this because where we are now that we are entering this, we're actually going to be I'm going to be using something similar to this and we're going to be here. We're going to actually be contributing the max. But our numbers here, um, as far as investing in the kids, we have a 13 year old and our other two kids are um, in college, but we already have money rolling in for them. So they're good. It's now a 13 year old. But it all depends, again, on your number. So my number is going to be a little bit more because I'm taking that other paycheck. So I encourage you. Get another job that only focus on your debt, that you're not getting another job to focus on a vacation. Let me tell you something about a vacation. When you go on vacation and you use a credit card, um, I was telling our class, that vacation follows you. It follows you home because you have to pay for it. So did you really go on vacation and you got to keep paying for it? Life is not built like that. God did not create us to spin the wheels like a mouse, go on vacation, come home. It follows us. That don't feel like a vacation to me. And then you're doing it over again. And then you're waiting on your income tax to pay it off and do it over again. No. How will you get to this point where you can invest, where you can put money up in your 501, if, in your IRA, where you can put money up in your 401k, how you can do both? How would you do that if you still have debt? You have to read. You have to learn. You have to apply yourself. If you're not reading, then you don't know. And sometimes we have to, you know, um, not to be rude to anyone, but we have to move ourselves from social media sometimes and get in a book and read or get on this Internet and research because retirement is real. It's going to come. All right. So Chris Hogan RIQ, basically, it asks you a couple questions. And which of these best describe your retirement dream? Um, you would say, I would say travel. What is your annual income? <clears throat> and let's say the annual income is $95,000. And if you were to retire tomorrow, how much would you need to fund your dream? Remember, the lesser you go because you don't have any debt, Right. Here, you you thinking you don't have no debt, meaning your house is paid off. It just showed you how you're going to pay off your house. Now, it may pay, take you seven years. It may take you eight years. But you don't have any debt. So let's say 1980 a month. No, let's make it a little bit more, like 2375. How many years until you would like to retire? So I'm going to say 15 years. How much have you already invested? So let's say you already have 75000 invested in your retirement, which is your 401k. You would need to invest, look at this amount, 607 monthly. That's it. But how would you even know that you would need to do this if you don't have a tool, if you don't read, if you don't know what's out there? If you're just saying, you know, um, 
I'm just living for the day. I'm just used to being broke. What I, I what I hate to see is when I go to stores like Target or Walmart and see older um elderly people working because there was no plan or they didn't know. And uh, my mom, thank God, but she didn't know. But my mom really set herself up, but she didn't know the things that I know or the things that you know. So it's really important to really think about your time retirement, really think about your future, um, get yourself a spreadsheet, a notebook paper, do your math, do the numbers, get on a plan. Um, go to my website, www.stanellmyersenterprises.com, where you can, um, there's a lot of information on there where you can look at other videos. You can go on there and you can basically see the different blocks and the breakdowns. So that I'm really explaining that this is real. Get out of debt, you guys. Let's think about the future. And as I always say, dare to be different because if we don't be different, we're going to be like everybody else. And again, you are all bosses. You can do this. See you. See you soon.